Thank you for uh, forwarding my mail. I've been trying to get all my oh. addresses updated. Yeah, that it reached you. Yeah. Good deal. Good morning. Good morning. I wish to have service again and appreciate everyone being here. So for today, this is our family service today and uh, let me go through the service order with you. We're going to have the reading of the three treasures and then the Dai San Mon and you can participate in the, our book service books. And we'll have our sutra chanting of the Sambujo and the Ju Sege. Uh, Sambujo, page 2425. Ju Sege is page 93, I believe. Nembutsu and Ekoku will complete the chanting portion of the service. And I'll come back for our Dharma message.
last week people were telling me that uh, during the Dharma message we had the view of the Onaiji and, and not of the podium so it was not properly done so I'm trying to keep better track of everything here and hopefully things will go well. So please join me in the reading of the three treasures. Hard is it to be born into human life. Now we are living it. Difficult is it to hear the teachings of the Blessed One. Now we hear it. If we do not realize the truth in this life, when will it be realized? Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in the Buddha. May we, be, may we absorb ourselves in the principle of the way to enlightenment and awaken in ourselves the supreme will. I take refuge in the Dharma. May we be submerged in the depths of the doctrine and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. I take refuge in the Sangha. May we live in harmony in the great assembly as disciples of Buddha and be freed from all hindrances, becoming units of true accord in the life of harmony, in the spirit of universal oneness, freed from the bondage of selfishness. Even through myriad ages of compass, hard is it to hear such an excellent, profound, and wonderful doctrine. Now we are able to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of Tathagata's teachings. Rai San Mon Ninjin Ukegatashi Imasude ni Uku Uppo Kikigatashi Imasude ni Kiku Konomi Konjo ni Mokate to Suzumba Sada ni Izude no Shou ni Mokate Kakonomi o Dosen Taishu かくきょうぞうにいりてちえうみのことくならんいすかなそうにけしたてまつるまさにねがわくばしじょうとともにたいしゅうをとおりしていっさいむげならんむじょうじんじんみみょうのほうはやくせんまんごうにもあえようことか
시간 흐만소 세이브 조쇼가 가오무료호 부이가이세슈 부사이쇼빙그 세이브 조쇼가 다시 좋은도 요쇼쇼지포 극교비쇼몬 세이브조쇼가 리오크진쇼넨 조에슈본교 지금우조도 이쇼텐닝시 진니키엔다이고 부쇼부사이로 쇼조산쿠묘 고사이슈야쿠난 가이치에게 에시콘모한 에이소쿠쇼와쿠도 스란젠쯔몬 고소조만소 이오로지포 이치간 슈즈키 텐콘 푸겐 이슈카이 호소 고세쿠도쿠호 조오다이 슈즈 세포시시쿠 
together when there's more people the sound is fuller so little by little we're going to grow our sound and make it back to to the usual so I'd like to begin with this quote today so please join me in Gasho as I read this uh, passage from Chinnan Shoni to be transformed means that evil karma without being nullified or eradicated, is made into the highest good, just as all waters, upon entering the great ocean, immediately become ocean water. Namo Amidamsu, Namo Amidamsu, Namo Amidamsu, Namanda, Namanda, Namanda. It's a very nice quote, and in this passage, it is pointing to enlightened beings, you and me, being transformed into an enlightened being, a Buddha. Our lives of dualistic perspective, darkness and light, hell and the pure man, good, bad, do not remain in contradiction. Instead, we come to the light without removing the dark. We come to the pure land without leaving hell. Beyond choosing one over the other, we come to both in simultaneous inclusion, both becoming one. Okay. This is important. This is what you have to remember today. This is the essence and the gist of Jodoshinshu Buddhism. So you think about this quote ponder it for 20 years and then start again, okay? But today, I want to talk about the warriors. <laughs> so, uh, many of us, particularly here at Alameda in the Bay Area, we are fans of, of the warriors and really enjoyed their season, culminating in the championship and so many stories of each of these individuals that just came to join the team and then the older stars, young ones coming in. It's such a mix of stories and everyone, everyone just fell in love with the, every aspect of the team. And so for them to culminate that by coming together in such a successful manner was really uh, kind of a storybook uh, fairy tale ending. So. One of the scenes when they won the championship, the final buzzer, playing against Boston, and they showed Jordan Poole finding Clay Thompson, and they just enjoyed this big embrace, hugging each other, and a big smile on each face. And later on in an interview, uh, Jordan was saying, that's, that's Big Brother right there. So he would never let me lack, never let me slack. If there was ever any be better at, he told me. He was calling me over to work out with him, to get up shots with him. He's one of the greatest shooters of all time. And being able to have somebody who embraces you like that, just putting me in a position to be successful. And he was so happy that they had this relationship that he was taken in by, by Clay and that they had grown together closer and closer as the season wore on. And it could be just a story of mentorship, uh, an elder team member taking in the young kid and, and, and you know, helping him along, but there was so much more to the story. And the article was written about by this uh, person named Justin Pariso, and it's kind of a, he's talking about emotional intelligence. And this is, maybe some of you are aware of that. You look it up and you'll see it all broken down and a lot of uh, companies are using this emotional 
intelligence. They call it EI, and, and you'll see it these days. Uh, and basically, it's kind of like how people see each other, how they interact with each other, how they treat each other, and how groups, companies, or business, cause businesses can develop their environment to make it safe, supportive, and successful. So he's pitching this. And I enjoy the story of the warriors. You know, it's really intriguing and, and to look upon their success and, and to read about all these different stories. I really enjoy that. I'm a little bit hesitant about the sales pitch that was woven into his article, right? Because when I think about the temple, successful temples have always done this by living and practicing the Dharma. So you see this and how our members carry each other and maybe this is something that attracts us to the temple. We look around, see how people are uh, treating each other, respectful of each other and encouraging and welcoming. This is why we come. This is why we want to come. And so you see the same kind of traits and it's not repackaged as emotional intelligence, but this is our practice, everyday practice here at the temple. So in the story, um, if we remember you know, three years earlier, 2019, and the warriors are kind of getting beat up and people are getting hurt, and, and Clay you know, injured his uh, ACL, tore his ACL, and right after that, the next draft, they drafted Jordan Poole. So kind of looking like maybe he's the replacement for Clay, right? And many times we see the older ones, they get hurt, maybe they feel like they're threatened, their job's going to get taken, and you know, who's this new kid? So he has jealousy and fear, you know, percolating in himself, you know? And it could become an awkward relationship with this new teammate. It could extend into the other people in the team. But instead, Clay takes him in in this mentorship kind of thing. And so, you know, made me think of Joe Montana and Steve Young. Uh, it wasn't kind of like that. And so we see this again and again happening in a negative fashion. And so it's not always that we see it how it would play it out with the Warriors. And Jordan was saying that Clay took him under his wing and, and encouraged him, telling him to come, you know, to work out together. And you know, Clay was doing his own rehab, so he didn't travel with them when the team went to other cities. And so maybe Jordan would have a bad game or not be make some mistakes and things and lead to a loss. And Clay would text him or call him and give him some encouragement and talk about his own stories, what he did during his shooting slumps and things like this, and sharing his own kind of like tricks of the trade that help him get through, help him to get better, and all these things to help Jordan become the best version of himself that he could possibly be. And through that, Clay's helping the team, Jordan's helping the team, right? And so in the article, Besides all this happening between each other, we're talking about right after Clay tore his ACL. That was his uh, salary year, renegotiation year, and the team extended his five-year contract to Clay, right? $190 million, and you know, others might have paid him less or tried to see maybe we could cut this, you know, and, cut some of our ties so our losses aren't so big, but they rewarded him for what he had done in the past, demonstrating loyalty, Clay was loyal, and the team is showing that back to him. Since this is a huge, huge, powerful message, and as I read that, I remember that, huh? It's, wow, that's not the norm, that they would, who knows if he's ever gonna even make it back. They give them this five-year contract, and, and it's always like, when you get back, you're going to start again. You know? And it's like, understood. It's just understood. And so, in the article, when he's just talking about the emotional intelligence, 
is saying all these successful companies try to develop an environment, psychologically safe environment. And this is this emotional intelligence built into the culture of the company. And so in our case, Buddhist culture, that when we come here, we want our members to feel protected, to feel safe so that they can be themselves and even to do things, to take risks when they try something, board meetings or something new at the bazaar. We encourage each other, and protect each other, and we do this all along. We do this already, automatically, right? So in the organization, in his pitch, he's talking about trust and loyalty to inspire individuals to be the best version of themselves and then in return they work hard they work hard we work hard so looking back for myself looking back on my own career as a minister i've been a part of six temple sanghas and i look back and i see these buddhist values in action from the temple leadership towards me and most of all providing trust providing a safe environment uh, where creativity and play, I can try things and, and be encouraged, you know, do what you do, do what you want to do, you know, try, try it, try it, you know, and then I feel to do the same and reciprocate the same kind of support to the membership. And so this is how it has played out. And I've had that. And I look back and see how I was treated with support and encouragement Idaho, Oregon, Portland, Alameda, Southern Alameda, Enmanji, 5 out of 6 ain't bad. <laughs> I'll take that. So I've talked about here, that here at our meetings, right? The six paramitas, wisdom and compassion, not just teachings. This is how we live our daily lives, right? Uh, how we treat each other. And this is our practice. And then it becomes mutual in benefit. Each member and the temple as a whole thrives when we immerse ourselves in the Dharma. Right? We don't need to repackage ancient truths and they call it emotional intelligence or something. You know, this is something that our elders have shared for centuries already now. Just see it and share it as we always have. And I think this is what we do, right? And sometimes we wonder, what is our practice? What is our practice? But this is our practice. It's exactly how we live like this, how we encourage each other. And, you know, it's not like a conclusion that finally I'm awakened. No, this life of awakenedness towards each other and living it together, this is an awakened life. We are the warriors. We are the champions. Please join me in Gusho. I'll read this quote again. To be transformed means that evil karma without being nullified or eradicated is made into the highest good. Just as all waters upon entering the great ocean immediately become ocean water. Namo Amidabhutsu. Nice to reflect upon the warrior season and to enjoy this with everyone here um, for the service. We'd like to thank everyone attending in person and those who are watching from the comfort of your homes and safety of your homes. I'd like to thank everyone who's provided the flowers and the fruits and the osonai and setting up the, the onaijin and preparing for the temple. Thank the video people, everyone who's involved here and there, everywhere. Everyone has uh, teamwork going on to provide every service every Sunday. So thank you very much. We're going to conclude with the service and then everyone can come up and wash your home. So please join me again in uh, this family service today. Namo Amidabhutsu. Namo Amidabhutsu. Namo Amidabhutsu. Namo 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 Thank you very much.
Tozo. Yeah, I'm gonna get it. 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 